All right. In this video, we'll be covering sort of the conceptual basis of correlations. Now, the first step that we need to understand is that a correlation has one key statistic called a correlation coefficient. Now, this is ultimately just another statistic, so we're boiling everything down to a single number, and this number ranges between 1 and negative 1, and it describes the relationship between two different variables, specifically the strength of that relationship and the direction of that relationship. So if a relationship is very strong, then X and Y tend to move together. So this is indicated by the absolute value of the correlation coefficient, so how far it is from zero. The further from zero, the stronger it is. And the direction is indicated by the sign. So is it a positive number or a negative number indicating a positive or negative? relationship. Now another way to think about correlations is they describe what's called the covariance of two different variables. So if those two variables are named x and y, then covariance is really asking how do x and y change or vary together or do they not change and vary together? So as you go above the mean of x, do you also go above the mean of y. As you go below their means for one, do you go below the mean for the other, and proportionately so. So to illustrate this, let's sketch out two quick scatter plots. One where we have a high degree of covariance, which you could see is like essentially a straight line where all the points line up. The other would be a degree of low covariance, where there's no relationship between these two variables, and this would really kind of look like just a blob where there's no consistent pattern there relative to how they're varying. Now to think about this, let's sketch in a dotted line where the mean of x would be and where the mean of y would be for these two variables. Now if we look at these top two points, what you can see is they're both above the mean of x and both above the mean of y. And the point that's really far above the mean of x is really far above the mean of y. Now, if we look at the two lower points as well, we see this same pattern, only now we're talking really far or not very far above and below the mean of x and y. Now, when we look at the low covariance situation, there is no consistent pattern. We have a point that's above the mean of x and above the mean of y, above the mean of x and below the mean of y, and the whole gamut. So let's say that we see this relationship. There is a correlation. What does this mean? Unfortunately, what it means is really contingent on your research design. And in most cases, you do not have any type of experimental control. So you can't really say anything beyond that this relationship exists. It could be the case that X causes Y. And this is definitely possible. However, you can't rule out the possibility that y actually causes x. Or it's also possible that x and y both have a causal relationship towards each other. So to put this in sort of a more concrete example, you know, let's say x is drinking alcohol and y is having problems in your life. Um, the first situation, well, drinking alcohol causes problems in your life. The second situation, well, having problems in your life causes people to drink. Maybe they're trying to deal with their problems. And then the third, X and Y cause each other, is kind of, uh, I think in Homer Simpson, alcohol is the cause and solution to all of life's problems. So yes, someone may drink because they're having trouble dealing with something in their life, but that drinking could turn around and cause more problems in their life, and it sort of makes this nasty spiral. Another problem that comes about is there may be some third factor that's at play because you don't have rigorous control. So there could be something else that causes both X and Y. So taking sort of the drinking and the problems in one's life, perhaps this person is just a really, really poor decision maker, which leads them to decide to drink more often than they should and also just kind of make bad decisions in their life, which causes problems in their life. So in this case, problems in their life and drinking may not actually be causally related at all, 
there is some third factor that is now the problem. Now, ultimately, the bottom line is, is when you see a correlation, you can't actually infer that there's a causal relationship. This is where you get sort of this famous line, correlation does not equal causation. All right, so to review, one of the big things you need to pay attention to is the correlation coefficient. This is the actual statistic. It describes the direction and strength of this relationship. So does X consistently move with Y, and in what direction do they both move together, or does one increase and the other decreases? The other is that just because you see a correlation, it does not mean there is a causal relationship. You do not have the rigor of an experimental design. There is, quote, the directionality problem. You can't tell if one variable causes the other or if that second variable actually causes the first or if they cause each other. And then, and this is really the big one, the third variable problem. You cannot rule out that there is some other factor that accounts for the relationship between these two variables. So there is some third variable that causes them both such that when it's present, both those other two second variables tend to be present as well.